Something that separates Cardano from other blockchains is its approach to building and development that has remained ever present, relentless and completely unfazed by market conditions. Whilst the mainstream narrative claims that Cardano is slow to ship, between the 600 strong team of big brains that form IOG and the ever growing developer community, writing code progressing Cardano towards the future of mass adoption is literally what they do on a daily basis. With all this building growth and breaking developments coming out of our ecosystem each day, we are witnessing in real time how the careful methodical peer reviewed approach that seemed slow in comparison to the first movers and many that came thereafter is now paying dividends, moving Cardano from the slow and steady to the era of fast and secure. This approach was always a feature not a drawback. It not only ensured Cardano was able to solve some of the most difficult technical problems, but attracted a community that's completely aligned with its mission, who importantly identified the value in this approach. This has turned out to be one of Cardano's greatest weapons, armed with a community equally as passionate, capable and determined to see it prevail as one of the most widely adopted systems of the world. The rate of building that's taking place is a testament to this and is for me what makes Cardano a true inevitability. See, it's not only the peer reviewed technology, but the quality and drive of the community that's formed around it is proving to be a formidable force. Welcome back for today's installment of Cardano Insights, where we track the all-important developments at the very pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem. So let's get straight into it. First up today, let's check in on what the 600 strong team of big brainers at IOG have been working on this past week. On Friday, they published their weekly development report that provides a high level overview of what the development team have been working on in terms of the core technology, wallets and services, smart contracts, scaling and governance. So I thought we'd start the week off with a quick IOG development update, outlining some of the highlights that didn't feature on Cardano Insights last week. In terms of wallets and services, work is ongoing with respect to the developments surrounding Lace Wallet's desktop application. The team has migrated all user interface components to specifically use Cardano JS SDK and has started working on regression testing to achieve feature parity and singular user experience between the desktop and extension applications. In addition, they've also been progressing developments on enabling hardware wallet support for the Lace desktop application. The Adrestia TypeScript team have continued to improve the Lace backend services and are currently in the process of engineering a wallet manager that will allow Lace users to seamlessly switch between wallets and networks. For Basha and Scaling, this past week has seen the Hydra team make several user experience improvements to the Hydra TUI and Hydra node and delivered the first version of persisted head states by publishing Hydra release version 0.8. In addition, they also met with researchers to discuss the head v1 specification and started working on the request for proposals for an external audit of the Hydra head protocol and implementation. Now, speaking of Hydra, coming away from the dev update for just a moment, over the weekend we got another example of the Cardano community experimenting with Hydra, which demonstrated, similar to SundaySwap's recent Hydra demonstration, some pretty remarkable results in terms of transaction speed. The demonstration showed approximately 15 transactions being executed in 5.13 milliseconds, which represents an effective TPS of just under 3,000 transactions per second. From my understanding, when you consider this test scenario was conducted using just one of the 3,000 plus nodes in the Cardano network, I think it's safe to say that with Hydra, TPS on Cardano should be of little concern. Now back to IOG's dev update, Mithril development has also been maintained at an increased level of pace and progress. The Mithril team has been working on finalizing the new continuous integration and delivery pipelines and implemented automated deployment of environments for testing, pre-release and release distributions. In addition, they also coordinated the migration of the Pioneer SPO nodes to these new Mithril networks. Finally, to all things smart contract related, last week the Plutus team continued working on SecP implementation, which we discussed briefly last week and we'll go into a little more detail in the next item of this episode. The work on SecP included the main exploratory parts of the process and Babbage support implementation for the transaction builder library. The Marlow team continued working on Marlow Run with continued feature testing and issue fixes being implemented. They also documented the achievements of the minimum viable Marlow and defined an initial list of features for the Actus Labs prototype. Over the course of the next couple of months, I think we're going to be hearing a lot more on the Marlow dev rollout and impact on the Cardano ecosystem. For the full dev report, check out my link in the description below. Next up, and you may recall in the recent Cardano 360 update, Nigel provided a brief insight into something that the team at IOG have been working on that holds great significance in terms of accelerating cross-chain development, the implementation of a crypto primitive called SecP. 
This forms one of the major capability upgrades that will be coming to the Cardano blockchain in the next chain upgrade event. What's more, this is another example of a community-driven requirement, where in similar fashion to what we witnessed with the Vassal upgrade, where many of the SIPs came from the community, IOG have taken note of this community request, making SecP a priority in their development roadmap. So let's dive in a little deeper to what SecP will bring to the Cardano blockchain. In this recent blog post, IOG outlined exactly what SecP is and why it's vital in terms of driving cross-chain development on Cardano. In blockchain, cryptography plays a vital role in ensuring trust and delivering security between network participants. DApp developers can use cryptographic primitives as the building blocks to create secure transactions containing sensitive data, develop custom encryption and decryption algorithms, and validate them by using digital signatures. Elliptic curve cryptography has become one of the go-to primitives for developing cryptographic protocols and secure applications. ECC provides the same level of security as other mechanisms while using shorter keys and signatures. SecP is the name of the elliptic curve that many blockchains including Bitcoin and Ethereum use to implement public key cryptography which uses a key pair, public and private keys, to validate transaction signatures. Currently, Cardano natively uses the Edwards Curve digital signature algorithm. This means that Plutus dApp developers who want to work with other blockchains and need to validate ECDSA and Schnorr signatures would have to spend time, effort and funds to implement such SecP elliptic curves in Plutus. Additionally, this considerably increases potential security risks. Since ECDSA and Schnorr aren't native to Cardano, such operations would be more expensive and time consuming and less provided as built-in functions. So to enable building cross-chain applications efficiently, IOG is adding new built-in functions to support ECDSA and Schnorr signatures along with Cardano's native signature. These built-in functions will become native to Cardano and since they will be implemented and audited by experts, they'll provide the highest level of security. This will allow any Plutus dApp developer to widen the choice of multi-signature or threshold signature design to use. In particular, Schnorr-based designs are well understood and widely used by the dApp community. After the new cryptographic primitives implementation, Plutus will be able to easily verify transactions from other blockchains using ECDSA and Schnorr standards. For example, Plutus will be able to natively verify signatures generated in EVM sidechains, which will improve the developer experience in terms of process simplicity, cost and advanced security. As mentioned previously, it was community feedback that indicated how the addition of new cryptographic primitives would improve the process of secure and efficient cross-chain dApp development on Cardano. Learning from the Vassal upgrade, IOG teams have done a lot of work refining the release process and are utilising this for the SecP release. The community is already helping to test this new functionality, which will initially be deployed on the Cardano DevNet. From that point, the functionality will undergo continuous testing on the preview and pre-production environments. Once the community is comfortable that the test benchmarks have been achieved and critical indicators have been met, IOG will then propose a date for the mainnet deployment via a hardfall combinator event. As we always do on Cardano Insights, we'll continue to follow the all-important development progress closely as it unfolds. Now from IOG's specific development focus to our awesome developer community who continues to equally contribute towards the growth of the Cardano ecosystem. Mikhail, who has featured a few times now on Cardano Insights in recent weeks, provided this update announcing that the initial version of PluTS was released this weekend. This is just the initial release and Plutius aims to further build out its library to enable Cardano related software to be written in TypeScript. This further supports the goal of growing developer adoption and easier integration of DAP deployment. So why is this significant? Well, we recently covered Mikhail announcing that he'd successfully written the first Cardano smart contract entirely in TypeScript and the introduction of Harmonic Labs, a startup that will offer all kinds of services related to project development, smart contract creation, to audit and consultancy. Now with the release of PluTS, which for anyone unaware is a domain specific language for writing Cardano smart contracts entirely in TypeScript, this represents yet another brilliant developer tool being introduced to the ecosystem that enables a wider pool of developers to start developing Cardano smart contracts, courtesy of Harmonic Labs. We all want to see more innovative decentralized applications being built on Cardano, and for this to occur, Cardano needs to continue growing the number of developers it can attract to the ecosystem. Seeing the level of developer activity, not solely in terms of projects building Cardano dApps, but developers focused on vital tooling and infrastructure, is a great sign that this blockchain is indeed heading in the right direction. 
Now, speaking of developer activity, last week also saw Cardano once again top the list for the highest level of development activity across all blockchains. Totaling 1,116 commits for the week, it dwarfed all other chains and on Thursday alone saw the highest level of activity with 792 commits pushed across 76 repos by 109 authors. The Cardano node saw the highest specific development activity with 365 commits for the week. For a ghost chain, there is some real spooky activity taking place here. Cardano is clearly demonstrating exactly what is meant by the term bear markets are for building. I for one am extremely grateful for the relentless approach taken by the devs in our community and it's this kind of application that is going to ensure the continued evolution of the Cardano blockchain. Next we go to a project that we've been tracking closely on Cardano Insights who have now moved into the final phase of their DAO Kickstarter campaign, the Indigo launch proposal. The open discussion will take place today with voting due to commence tomorrow, November 9th. From what I can see in scanning the landscape, Indigo Protocol are now set to become the next major DAP deployment in the Cardano ecosystem, with a planned launch date for November 21st. From what I understand, Cardano is now set to see the introduction of IUSD, IBDC and IETH upon launch as outlined in prior proposals. The launch proposal itself includes the Indigo paper summarising how the protocol will function, an agreement that the foundation as directed by the future Indigo DAO will hire and compensate Indigo laboratories for future work towards developing the protocol, and outlines specifics in terms of the token generation and liquidity bootstrapping events. So if you want to dive a little deeper into the Indigo paper, check the breakdown of the initial token distribution and understand the details surrounding the liquidity bootstrapping event that's in partnership with MinSwap, check the link in my description below. So as always, Cardano Insights will be sure to check the outcome of the launch proposal voting and of course cover the launch itself once the protocol goes live. Very soon Cardano will have its first synthetic assets platform and the IUSD stablecoin will soon be circulating all around the Cardano DeFi scene. Now it wouldn't be a normal week in Cardano if the wallet to wallet messaging service Mercury Chat didn't have a new feature release for the community. Yesterday they announced two great updates specifically focused around stake pools and stake pool operators. Now if an SPO creates a community, they have the ability to restrict access to which pool the wallet is staking with by simply updating the pool ID in the SPO community settings ensuring only delegators can access the community chat. In addition, the owner of a stake pool with a community on Mercury Chat can now send a message to every wallet that is currently delegating to the stake pool en masse. In one action, a community message can be sent to each delegator, which I think is going to be a great way for SPOs to connect, communicate and engage. This feature could be used for important announcements, reward notifications or special giveaways to help improve delegator retention of the pool. I really like what the guys at Mercury Chat are doing here and I've said it before, the platform is really starting to now shape up into Cardano's very own Discord style application. Next we go to Flint Wallet. This weekend they also published a development update themselves with the announcement that the latest Android and iOS update is now available for download at the relevant app stores. The latest release enables the highly anticipated multi-asset sending, one of the features many in the community have been requesting since being made available on other Cardano wallets. Now users, leveraging Cardano's unique EUTXO architecture, can use Flint to send multiple assets in just one transaction. Along with the multi-asset sending, this update also introduced some UI and UX improvements, so if you haven't already and are looking for a quality card on a mobile wallet packed with new features, go give it a try, linked in the description below. Next up, and it would seem SeaWorld have been hard at work behind the scenes working on a pretty big Cardano integration with one of the largest and world's first multi-chain NFT data aggregator sites. It's been a long time coming, but with Cardano consistently in the top 3 blockchains for NFT volume, with Cardano NFT projects building solid communities, floor prices rising across the ecosystem, and significant progress being made with big movers like Book.io, The Ape Society, and Clay Nation to name but a few, this development was only a matter of time. Late last week, CryptoSlam announced that Cardano Cardano NFTs are now listed on the platform. Now all CryptoSlam users will be able to track Cardano NFTs amongst the blockchain rankings for NFT sales volume, analyse important data for all Cardano NFT projects, discover new collections and much more. Opening up Cardano NFTs to a much wider audience, many of which you may not even be aware that Cardano does NFTs and in a big way, for me this is a great move to further increase user acquisition and get far more attention from across the industry to what is fast becoming the most vibrant and progressive NFT scene blockchain wide. In addition, both Hosky and Congo from the Ape Society joined CryptoSlam on their YouTube channel to discuss what makes Cardano's community and the protocol so special. The video also discusses CryptoSlam's new integration of the Cardano blockchain, so go check it out, linked in the description below. 
Finally today, and speaking of Hosky with NFTs in mind, whilst Hosky himself is no doubt utterly disgusted with the level of participation and engagement the Hosky NFT collection has seen since its inception, this weekend also saw a pretty huge milestone achieved in terms of NFTs sold. Hosky in just over 11 months has completely sold out the entire collection of cash grab NFTs, making history in selling a mammoth 420,420 individual NFT mints. If I'm correct in my understanding, this not only represents the largest NFT sales volume on Cardano, but must be the largest collection ever sold worldwide. Whilst we know very well both the Hosky token and NFTs are entirely worthless and intended to be that way, as I've mentioned before, what Hosky has done in terms of networking, consistently challenging difficult discussion points, building community awareness and contributing to the education and adoption of the Cardano blockchain, his positive influence amongst the Cardano community can't be denied. The Cardano ecosystem is a far better place with the highest or lowest quality meme coin and NFT collection ever created, depending on which way you want to look at it, sticking around. So that's it for today's instalment of Cardano Insights as we keep track of the developments and continue to spread those positive Cardano vibes. If you found value in the content and want to help the channel fit as many new subscribers in just one video transaction, then please be sure to comment, share, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell, which is the best way you can help support the channel. We'll be back soon with your daily roundups. Until then, thanks for watching, have a great day and as always, keep it Cardano.